don't know me, I'm Yui. Uh, I'm a 3D VTuber modeler uh, that has made models for like VTubers that you might know, such as you know Iron Mouse, uh, Yanners, Snuffy, Bao, Rose Doodle, you know many others. And uh, basically, I'm here to guy give you guys an insight on what goes on behind the scenes of you know your favorite VTubers, how they get 3D models. Uh, what you might want to do if you would like to become a VTuber like them and if you would like to get a 3D model yourself, you know, stuff like that, you know, uh, and of course, how to go from a 2D reference to, you know, a custom 3D model, like how I usually do. If you've ever seen me on Twitter, you'll be able to see that I, I've, I've uploaded, that's all I do, really. <laughs> I just upload a bunch of 3D models and stuff. But yeah, um, let's start off uh, with, you know, if you've ever wondered if you wanted to start VTubing, uh, what's the first thing you would like, you know, you, uh, one second, uh, <laughs> that's the first thing you probably thought about, like, like, you probably thought about how do I go about getting a model, like, should I get a 3D one, should I get a 2D one, should I, like, you know, make it myself, or should I hire someone such as myself to make it, you know, like, let's start from the beginning, right? So say you do, say you do want to become a YouTuber, right? What is the very, very first thing you need? Well, as this panel implies, you need a design reference, right? So, you know, without a reference, you have no character. So whether you want to go for a live 2D model or a 3D model, uh, you know, just straight ahead to a 3D model, you need a design blueprint. Uh, but what happens if you're not an artist? Well, um, I have a little uh, presentation to go along with uh, me talking, so uh, so it's not just a white background. So, oops, <laughs> that's the jazz music. <laughs> Exposed. Ta -ta. <laughs> okay, here's my little guy. I made a little presentation. I hope you guys like him. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this guy's thinking: Should I go get a model? Should I do it 2D or 3D? Or should I hire someone, right? So that's 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 what we're we're thinking. Like, you want to be a YouTuber? This is the first thing you need to think about, in my opinion, at least. So apart from you know getting a microphone, you know, getting a computer to be able to uh, you know stream. <laughs> but yeah, so you do want to become a YouTuber. Yeah, that's good. That's I, I'm glad. <laughs> so um, you need a design, and uh, that's yeah, that's a design. <laughs> hmm. uh, but you can't draw, right? Say you can't draw. Uh, if you're an artist, you could, you know, you could do your design yourself, but say you can't draw. Um, let's see. You could uh, hire someone to make a design for you, right? Or, uh, right? Because you can't draw. <laughs> right? And they come in and they make the design for you. A really handsome man. Or, uh, <laughs> they might say no, so you could just instead go and uh, you know, look for somebody else, or make yourself a character design using Pit Crew or any other online character maker, uh, or use a character maker from a video game. You know, it's you're just trying to get a design down on paper and not the full model. So that's what that's what you want to do first, right? Then now um, here comes the tricky part. Like how? Like once you have an idea and a character on your screen you're happy with. How do you make it move around and react to your own movements? Well, uh, before that, I'm also here to say that you don't have to have uh, a character to, uh, you know, you don't have to make a character move to become a VTuber. Uh, of course, it's super cool and you can do all sorts of stuff when, you know, you can. But you can definitely be a VTuber using a static image if you want to, just like a straight old static image. Uh, that's also more than valid and there's a lot of people out there already doing it. Uh, if you just want to start off being a YouTuber, it's also a really good way to you know test the waters and see if you like just streaming or if you just like using an avatar without spending too much time or money. So if you just want to make a design and pop it there, say that you're a YouTuber. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. But regardless, say we do want to make a new. This is when you have to choose if you want to go with a live 2D model or a 3D one. Usually. Uh, <laughs> A custom 3D model comes after the live 2D, but you can definitely get a 3D one before you get a 2D model, right? Uh, and vice versa. But we'll, you know, we'll get to that a bit later on. Like which one you, which one you want to go for first, whether it's a live 2D or a 3D one. 
uh, since there's a few differences with either of them that you might prefer uh, against the other. They're, they're both good for different reasons. So, a live 2D model is generally smoother, and let me get out of the way. <laughs> Where it is? Ah. <laughs> um, live 2D model is generally smoother, uh, and usually has more details in the rating than the 3D model, and it's also much less resource intensive. So if you have a weak computer, it'll help its inevitable suffering running the game, the model, the layout, uh, the recording, and you know all that stuff. It's just gonna like explode. So having a 2D model is actually easier on your computer. Um, let me go up the way again. Yay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's also considerably way more artists uh, in the live 2D part of it uh, that you know. You can you can choose, and it's 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 much more available since there's a whole uh, community of life to be riggers at, there as well uh, at your disposal. I believe there's an entire Discord just full of life to be riggers that you can just you know talk to and and message directly. And also, right, you can you can you can find them on Twitter, you can find them on Discord, or you can find them just you know in in their own websites. <laughs> Or you can try and make a life to be yourself, right? It'll probably look like a jelly at first, and probably not as good as how uh, professionals do it. But I mean, it, it's not as hard to start as a 3D model is, so you'll probably get something working sooner or later. <laughs> but it might look like a jelly at first. But that's fine. You know, you get it working. The caveat with life to be models, though, is the fact that they're pretty restricted in the movements you can do with them. You generally can't look at their backs. You usually can't see the top, the top of their heads uh, or the sole of their shoes, right? Uh, you can't move your arms or legs freely, and you can't look behind yourself. So here's the little character trying to look behind themselves. You know, the top of their head, you can't do that in life to be sadly. I mean, kind of. The sole of their shoe, you can't, um, you can't be, you can't, Go I mean, you can go through this close, but you can't really go inside of them. So if you ever want to go inside of them, that's something a 3D model can do. <laughs> yeah. With 3D models, you can you know, dance around, you can use them to play games, or uh, pretty much anything you can with a live 2D, but you can use it for VR chat, or you can use it uh, for, for just getting up and, and, and using your hands and stuff, right? So basically, uh, and that's about it. You can use it just the way I am right now as well. So, why, why go? See here, here they are dancing. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to say though is that you might think, oh, you can use your hands with a three model, right? And why am I not using them right now? Well, it's because I don't have the the hardware <laughs> to do it. You need a specific camera to to use the hands, and I don't have that, uh, so I have no thumbs. <laughs> but. I have the freedom of movement if I so choose with uh, correct hardware. <laughs> but if I had the correct hardware, I would be able to punch you guys. <laughs> I would have that option, but it's not like I was going to do it anyways. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, why go for a life to be as opposed to a 3D if you basically have more freedom with it? Well, apart from what I said, from what I said earlier, a live 2D model it makes for a perfect reference to base a 3D model off of, uh, you know, and it's a perfect way to transition from your main model, right, your main, your main character, to uh, the 3D model whilst keeping the, the style and the, the original look of the character much closer to, you know, the original art. Uh, you can, however, uh, do it the other way around, but it's generally harder to to get it to get it working the same way. Like having a 3D model, unless the 3D model is done in a very specific way, it's very hard for the artist to get a 2D drawing to look the same way. So usually, you might want a 2D model just to make the 3D artist's uh, job a bit easier later on. But yeah, uh, but you don't have to. Right? You don't have to have a live 2D model. Maybe you just prefer a 3D model in general just because it gives you the freedom of movement. Well, you know, you don't need a live 2D model. You can just use a perfectly usable reference, you know, that, that shows the character in front view, back view, side view, any views that you want. Right? 
And uh, you can make that, the, this, this little uh, character, into 3D, you know, directly without a life to be modeled. Right? Um, so, how would you go about that with, you know, how would you go about it? There's many ways to, to do it. You could hire someone, as I mentioned before. Or uh, you could use uh, a character maker, such as B-Roy, right? Uh, <laughs> this, is the, this is my little guy wanting a 3D model. He's like, no, I don't want life to be a 1 3D. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you could hire someone, and they can come back and make, uh, make this little guy 3D, that but 3D. <laughs> Or, yeah, as I was saying, you can use v Studio, which is uh, uh, just a character maker like how you find in video games, but it's specifically designed to be able to make anime characters. It's a little bit, uh, you know, it's a little bit uh, restricted, but it's a really, really good way to start VTubing if you want, like, somebody to move and stuff. It's actually the best way to start VTubing, in my opinion, since it's a completely free program, and I'm not sponsored by it, I swear, I just don't like it. <laughs> and, and yeah, but what if you feel like uh, you, you don't have money for a 3D modeler because they can be quite expensive and you feel too restricted with, with B-Roid limitations? Well, the last and hardest but funnest option for money, you know, in my opinion at least, is uh, doing it yourself. Now, uh, this may seem daunting because you don't have money, but this may seem daunting, but it's actually not as difficult as it seems, and uh, it can get really good results in my opinion. Uh, what you do need is time, though. But with a lot of time and patience, I'm sure you can you can do it yourself. I'm sure you'll be able to. It's it's not that hard. You just need somebody to like explain it for you, and, you know, uh, slowly go over the details and stuff, which is what I'm gonna try and do without completely boring you guys. Um, but yeah, uh, basically. I'm going to open up uh, Blender, and you can you guys can see it was 3D all along. <gasps> oh my goodness! <laughs> so I made this little guy to explain uh, how how a 3D model can can be cool. <laughs> you like him? <laughs> oh, you guys like him? Yeah, he's nice. Uh, after I explain uh, all this, you know, the, once I go over all these kind of things, um, can I just see fans? <laughs> what kind of accent do I have? <laughs> Anyways. Well, once, once I explain everything that I want to explain, how three models work and stuff, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do a round of questions where I'll be able to hear you guys, and you can, you can just ask away if you have any questions, because I will be going kind of quick, because there's a lot of things that go into three models, and uh, yeah, we can be here all day, so I don't, I don't want to bore you to death. So uh, I'll, I'll show you some things with him, and then we'll go to a real uh, three model that I made for a client. Uh, specifically Rose Girl, if you know her. I don't think she's an off kind, but yeah, it's it's one of the most recent ones that I've done and yeah, she was just there. And she let me use it in off kind. So yeah, basically that's it. Anyways, uh, the first misconception about making 3D models is that in, in my opinion, you do not need to know how to draw. Basically. Um, all you need is a clear reference to put in the back of your character, like how I did here. It's not a very clear, <laughs> since I did it in three seconds, but I, I didn't really need a very specific uh, character design for him. It was just a really quick and easy thing. But yeah, all you need is a clear, hopefully clear, uh, background image to put, so you can have him you know, right behind and you can kind of trace over the character, right? So, uh, Right, so, so you can just kind of trace over him, kind of like uh, you would if you're learning to draw. So tracing and, and drawing is really bad, but tracing in 3D is actually very encouraged because it just helps you get all the proportions right. Never mind that these proportions are wrong, I decided later on I wanted them to be small and cute. <laughs> but basically, if, uh, uh, if you ever want to do this, basically, what you need is, uh, is a program, right, to be able to do this. Like, how do I put a character here without a program? Like, you're going way too fast. To slow down, Where, what, what am I looking at? What is this? Well, this is Blender, all right? Let's start there. <laughs> this is Blender. Uh, it's a 3D modeling program, such as Maya, or, or maybe if you've ever heard of 3ds Max. Uh, but I prefer to use 
uh, Blender because it has a lot of tutorials and it has a lot of add-ons that makes your life much easier. And, uh, and it's completely free. So anybody can use it if you're ever interested in any 3D thing, uh, whether it's VTubers or not, just go ahead and use it. It's completely free. And yeah, there's a lot of tutorials. One of them, I believe, is like a donut tutorial. It's very, very uh, popular. Uh, I did not do it to learn, so there's no need to do that. But if you ever want to make a donut, you can. Uh, basically, yeah. You got Blender. You open it up, you put a little reference in the background by dragging and dropping, and you're like, all right, what do I do? How do I, how do I go about making this little guy? Right? Well, uh, basically, I, fa I first start with the face. This is going to be a really, really fast and uh, you know, quick way of going about doing a character. Right? I, I don't usually start this way because they're usually not this simple. But this is just a quick little way. Um, so what you can start with, basically, is having a little circle. No, not a circle. A sphere. <laughs> a sphere is a circle, but in 3D. Wow. So yeah, you got your face. There you go. <laughs> Quick and easy, right? It's easy, yeah, I'm telling you. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a scary, yay! <laughs> Little claps. It's not as scary as it seems. Uh, but uh, basically, yeah, what you want to do is, is trace over it, is go over the, the characters with, with simple shapes at first, if you can. So if you have, you know, noodle arms or, or you know, little nubs for, for uh, fingers and, and hands, you just want to copy paste the, the little circles uh, and you know do it for the feet if you want to and then you can elongate it you know you can use the 3d and make it go Ooh. now we're thinking shapes <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you want to keep it simple at the beginning in my opinion right even with a character this simple don't worry we will go to a more complicated one later on but this is just to you know explain the basics um, uh, but what if it's a bit more complicated, like this little like body here, right? What do you do then? Uh, well, there's a lot of things that uh, you can do to help your help help yourself model, right? Uh, and this is the part where it gets a little bit confusing, but it's actually not too hard, right? So every single character is made up of polygons. I haven't I haven't really showcased polygons yet because he's very simple. Uh, I'm trying to keep it simple, but we need to use polygons to make this like more complex shape. Even if it's like a little square, you, we're gonna wanna like connect the arms to the legs, right? So what you would do, in you know the way I would do it, you can do it any other way, is grab a polygon from wherever you want. Sorry for the keyboard noises. The, mic the microphone is right in, in, in the way, right? Uh, you separate it, you don't want it to be stuck there, and uh, you make it big, right? The same exact way as the body. Now you might realize I'm not making exactly the same uh, size of the, as the body because, and here's a little neat trick, you can mirror it. So everything you do on one side gets done on the other side. So you get to do half the job, I suppose. <laughs> you get to do less job, less work. And we always want to do less work, right? Uh, uh, so this is this is a polygon. You can make it basically any shape you want, but usually you want to keep it uh, a square or a triangle because uh, yeah, I don't know the, the, the polygon gods decided square and triangles are better than any other shape. So yeah, you want to keep it square and triangles. Um, and what you can do with this little like shape, you can extrude it so you can make other polygons out of other polygons. Right? Or you can do little cuts in them, kind of like Lego, right? So here we made a, like, a, like a cake kind of thing, right? So basically every single character that you see that is 3D is made up of, made up of these little square triangle things. It can be a triangle if you cut it right there, right? Uh, but, but yeah, every single 3D character is made up of these things. And you need to make up a character out of these little squares. Sounds difficult, but there's, there's other things that you can do to make your life easier. For example, there's a little thing called a subdivision surface modifier. I know it's a mouthful. That makes it uh, easier to work with uh, these little squares. Right? Uh, 
these little squares now are kind of like soft, so it's kind of like working with clay, but uh, I suppose if clay was squares and triangles, so not like clay at all, but you know. <laughs> uh, and that makes it easier, basically, to, by using this little like technique, this little uh, thingy here, subdivision surface modifier. It's, I, I use different shortcuts from uh, every other person that uses Blender, so it's not very really useful. I'm just showing how to go about it, really. Uh, so yeah, we got our little guy. He has a little bit of a beer belly, but that's okay. You know, we don't judge. Uh, and how how do we go about you know not making him completely completely flat, right? Well. Such as, like, you can extrude like this, you know, giving a cape or something. You can also extrude in the, uh, I believe, the Z axis. So if you want to give it thickness, you can. So there you go. We have given it thickness. Now, I'm going to do a thing that is going to be kind of confusing at first. Uh, but this is really just to give it color and be able to see the shape a little bit better. Or maybe I could uh, do this, actually. There we go. That makes it a bit easier to see. This cube. There we go. That makes it a bit easier to see. And I'm not blinding you guys with white anymore. So this is what we've been doing. What uh, you, you can now see the the polygons. Uh, it's a bit more complex looking like this. So again, keeping it sim simple is, is best in my opinion. I like uh, doing this. Which is, what I was is what I was about to do. I like doing this. I like keeping it super simple. Uh, and just going like boom. Small second, you'll see. It'll become super like 2D in just a second. Bum, bum, bum. And yeah, he's almost flat looking. And if you give him if you give him a little outline doing a little magic, you'll be able to see that uh, he he immediately looks more 2D. So let's see. And he has a little. Wait, he does not have a little outline. Ah, there we go. Okay. He does have a little outline now. You can make him smoother. Yeah. I'm, his back is hurting me. I'm going to try and fix it. <laughs> there we go. So now we, we can see that he's, he's, he's kind of 2D looking, at least his body is. And uh, I like working this way because it actually represents what I'm. What I'm you know, trying to do as opposed to looking at like this because that's not really how the, the final product is going to look like. So it's a bit confusing. So yeah, I like I, li I like doing it like this because you can still see what you're doing if you you know go into this edit edit mode, I suppose it's called. But yeah, uh, basically that's that's what you would do with every single character. You would you know extrude. Uh, you know, you can, you can see it like this. There's different ways of viewing it. You can extrude different parts of the character, if you want him to have a tail, for example, you can, you can make it, you can make him have a tail, small little tail, right? And it's a lot of, like, small little things you have to do uh, to get it to how you want to uh, make it look. So, for example, for eyes, you can also carve into it, you can carve into it, you can make it a circle, right? And you can color the circle in with black. And that's a singular ominous eye. Maybe we can make him have another eye and he's less ominous. <laughs> Ooh, it's creepy right now, but bear with me, please. Bear with me. I'll make him cute in just a second. Oh god, he's, oh god, he's so scary. Oh god, wait, 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 I need to make him, I need to make him cute. And you know how you make characters cute? By giving them a, a little... <laughs> So usually I would I would uh, have this be mirrored because if not you can see that a lot of things are not perfectly symmetrical and it kind of makes it look a bit a bit bad. So you can delete this side and <laughs> he appears <laughs> and mirror it and now he's a nice little friend. Right? Basically that that's that that's what it all boils down to, uh, kind of. Uh, but if you want to go and see an actual, you know, anime character and not just this little guy, we can go into Rose Duo, uh, which I have worked on not long ago, and, and see how a completed model actually looks like and not just like a stick figure, right? Uh, 
uh, <laughs> because that can get a bit boring. So yeah, this is this is Rose Hudo. Uh, she debuted her maid outfit not too long ago, and uh, her her reference, which was not a really crudely drawn picture of a six year old, uh, was was like this. Right. So I'm gonna put it over here so you guys can see. She basically designed the character with you know with this little dress. Uh, it has you know this little part can can you know get off. You know it can you can take it off. Uh, she drew the little shoes so I can uh, design it a bit better. And she basically told me do it on your style because she likes tune shaded and that's what I like doing the most. So that's exactly what I did. What I did was uh, grab the you know the. The, the character, you know, do the symmetry thing, you know, start um, extruding polygon by polygon until I had something that resembled uh, Rose Beetle, basically. Uh, let, me, let me take off the little rig. Okay, now you can see better. Uh, it takes a little, a little, you know, a little time to, to, to do it, but as I said, with patience and determination, you can basically do anything, in, in my opinion. Uh, and it's not like it's a Herculean effort or anything. I'm basically just tracing over what she did and, and letting you know symmetry do the work for me, really. So if we go into the topology, this is called the topology. It's not called polygons. You can see that this, that's exactly how I did it. You know, just kind of not exactly one by one, but but almost. Uh, and there's a few key things that you need to keep in mind when uh, doing anime, you know, anime characters since. I mean, I don't know if you guys noticed, but they're pretty weird. <laughs> like, when it comes to translating it to, to 3D, there's a lot of things that don't really work out. And that's why there's a lot of uh, anime, just movies and stuff, that, that look very uncanny. Because anime characters are really weird. They have really huge eyes. Usually their mouths are not where they're supposed to be. You know, they have this weird side mouth where it's almost like they're... they're I don't know, I, I could explain, but it's almost like it's, it's in the middle of their face sometimes. And, and they just don't abide by the laws of physics, basically. Uh, so there's a lot of, you know, a few little tricks that you have to do to, to make it work, you know, semi, as correctly as possible, as correctly as you can, in 3D. And again, I'm not going to go through everything, because I can't be really here all day. But uh, one of the notable ones, and the ones that I like the most, are the fact that every single 3D anime character's eyes are hollow. So if we go and see into her eyes, I can kind of tell that if I delete her iris, this is hollow. It's it's a little like concave concave looking how do I explain it? How do I one second? One second. Reset. There we go. Now you can see that it's kind of like hollow. It goes in the way. Right, and then you put the iris outside, so it's not like a, it's not a sphere, because they have such weird eye shapes that you can't make it a sphere. Because once you rotate, you start once you start rotating that sphere, it kind of like goes out of the, out of the socket of the skull. So what what we do as three modelers instead is make it so the iris is a different part of it, and we rig the little eye. You know, we put a little bone in the eye to to move around such as to kind of trick our monkey brains into thinking that it's a sphere somehow. Uh, and it worked out, mostly. But sometimes you'll see that uh, anime characters uh, kind of have the eyes sometimes come out of their, you know, uh, come out of their, their uh, you know, face sometimes, because it clips through since it's not a perfect sphere. But that's just the kind of stuff that you can like fix a little. Uh, with some kind of patience, uh, but yeah, that's basically it. Uh, there's another little trick that that we do. Oh God! Oh, <laughs> let me control Z. Ah, there you are. I'm sorry for deleting your eye there for a second. Uh, there's another thing that you do with three models to make them look a bit less uh, uncanny, and that's pushing their their mouths inwards a bit. Weirdly enough, so usually mouths don't go this in, and for more stylized characters, I mean, she's pretty stylized, but even more stylized characters, you could bring the mouth, you know, inner, and it looks like they, they have that, like, side mouth thing going on. So that's another neat little trick, because if you make it so 
it goes out the way, right? Kind of like that, like how it would work in real life. It kind of looks like she's puckering her lips at all times almost. So to fix that, you kind of like, oh God, <laughs> what is happening here? You kind of like make it so it's uh, going inside a little. That's another neat little trick. Another trick is adding these outlines, uh, which are which are done in a very specific way that's kind of hard to explain. But yeah, those little tricks makes it makes it much more two D than 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 three D looking, while still keeping the the design as close uh, as possible. I would love to show you other designs, but I did not ask for permission. So she's the only thing I can I, I can show you guys at the moment. But uh, basically, uh, after the after the head, you might think, I and mean, after the body, you might think, what do you do about things that are more complicated, such as the hair? You know, that's a pretty complex shape, or or the clothes, or whatever. Well, every single thing uh, that you do, right, you can do in a different way. Uh, there's many ways to 3D model, and one of these ways is. Uh, kind of like sculpting in, in, in real life. You can sculpt uh, and you can kind of like carve into the model. Uh, but I prefer doing it all with polygons because I am crazy about that. <laughs> uh, another way is making spaghetti noodles out of the hair. Uh, and that's just it's a bit hard to explain. But basically, you, you grab a polygon and you, you, you extrude it and you make spaghetti noodles out of it. right? And basically, you just start plopping them on, one after another, until it kind of resembles hair, right? And then, you know, copy paste it, copy paste it, right? Until it kind of resembles hair, and then you that doesn't really look like hair, but you know what I mean. Uh, well, I hope you know what I mean at least. Uh, and and then you you connect it, and yeah, that's basically hair. Uh, it's a lot to take in at once, but that's like a really, really quick crash course on how to be models are made. We explain really badly because there's just too many things to think about. Uh, but that's basically only the model. There's like five other steps that you need to go with uh, for models, uh, which are you know the textures, the UVs, which uh, if you don't know what UV unwrapping is, it kind of sounds like I'm asking you to like skin the character alive, and that's kind of correct. Uh, you need to unwrap the character, uh, kind of like a little Santa Claus uh, chocolate. If you know what, the, what those are, you know you put it. You kind of like take the wrapping off and you put it on a piece of paper. That's what UV unwrapping is. So if I were to grab her arm and go to her UVs, you can see that it's unwrapped here, right? And with this, you can kind of draw over it which is how textures are created. So here you can see, whoa, second. here you can see the texture. Uh, it's not really uh, pretty, but it does the job. <laughs> here you can see the texture, and say you wanted to texture the arm. You know, it's a very simple arm, it just has like a little line. So what you would do is UV unwrap the, the, the hand, kind of like a little Christmas uh, Santa Claus thing, and put it on the table, put it on the table, and, and make it flat then you can, you can draw over it. Uh, that's what UV unwrapping and texturing is. Uh, more complex textures require more time, but that's basically what it is. You can use Clip Studio Paint to, to draw over the textures, or you can use a specific program, such as Substance Painter, to draw specifically on top of the character, just like, like, you know, like how it is, like you can draw on here. Uh, then, uh, step three is probably rigging, which is how I made the, the little guy move, uh, right? Uh, and you and I really like rigging because you can make them do little stupid things and you can have fun with them. You, know, you can make them go like, hi. Basically, my little puppets. <laughs> I can make any VTuber do whatever I want if I so wish, <laughs> as long as they let me work on them. I make <laughs> but basically, uh, yeah, rigging, and then there's. Uh, that's basically it visually, and then there's setup, and then there's renders. Um, but those two are like very, very boring, because uh, you can't just use a 3D model wherever you want. It's not like a picture, it's, it's, it's not like a PNG, it's, 
it's a bit more complicated than that, and then you need to set it up. You need blah, 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 blah. It's very boring. The, the cool part is making it. And you make it through your squares. And you go insane. Not that I can. <laughs> but basically, that's it. Uh, I know I said it very, very quick. But if you guys have any questions, we have, I believe, around 20, 15 minutes for questions. Uh, which I guess you will have since I didn't really explain too well. Uh, but yeah, I, I'll enable audio now if, if you'd like to ask any questions. Uh, okay, yeah, you, a uh, white man guy with with uh, with uh, Is it white me? humans. That's pretty cool. Uh, with the white shirt, yeah. Okay, so um, what's your question? So you um, so you talked about the um, the um, outline. Um, Around the character, so um, so like around the um, arms and stuff, right? So now um, for the outline, like I would think that um, for something um, 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 more complicated, like the, the, the hand, right? So so you need to have yeah. a a um, correct um, outline, like no matter what the location is. So um, I guess. Technically, like on a high level, how does that work? And like, is there a keyword that I can look up on Google? Like, what is? Yes. Um, so there is a keyword for. Okay, I'm gonna meet you guys for a second because I can't. Okay. Because <laughs> I was hearing myself. So there is a keyword for uh, for the outlines. Uh, I believe. I don't remember how it's called. I believe. Uh, if you just look up how to make 2D outlines in Blender, uh, you'll be able to find many, many options. But it's uh, if you want to know exactly how to do it, it's you basically uh, duplicate the character, right? You duplicate the this arm, for example. Oh, you were talking about the hand, so let's do the hand, right? Okay, we're more complicated and stuff. You would duplicate this hand. You know, you grab it, duplicate it, Can and you kind of make it fatter. Don't see you. Like, you, don't you encompass see it, right? So you make it a bit fatter, right. and you're like, oh, why? But you'll see. You make it a bit fatter, and you give it a, a material. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not showing you my screen. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing you my screen now. All right, all right, sorry. So here. Uh, you get the hand, right? Sorry about that. Uh, and you make it fatter. Let me, let me repeat that. So you make it fatter, uh, and, you, and you grab a material and make it black, you know, the, the color of the outline. And then you use, uh, you flip the normals, it's kind of hard to explain what normals are, but you flip the normals and you enable back face culling. Right? <coughs> so you probably want to look up something to do with back face culling. Uh, you know, outlines with back face culling, maybe you want to look up uh, if that's what you're looking for. <coughs> and it kind of like just does it for you, it's actually really, really simple. Uh, as you can see, it, it, it worked out. Uh, the, the rig will work with it. See? It, it, it's, it's actually very simple. And if you do it like manually like this, you could also make it so some some outlines say something is like ugly. Um, here. You might want to taper this. You, wanna, you might want to taper this part. You can just grab the outline and make it thinner. See? And now it's like a nice little taper. So it's it's really it's it's actually really easy to to, to work with. Um, I don't remember the name of, of, of it exactly, but if you just look up outlines in, in Blender, there's there's a lot of tutorials uh, to go about it. Sorry, yeah, I don't really remember the name. If I remember the name, I will let you know. Okay. Now I can hear you guys again. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, I'll check the I'll check the. Yeah, somebody in, in Discord actually said inverted hull, and that's exactly what it is. It's the it's, it's the inverted hull method, right? Yeah, I believe it's called. Uh, so if you want to look that up, it's, it's the inverted hull method. Outlines with inverted hull. Method. Thank you, Carrie Chen. Okay, thank you very, 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 very well done. Is there any other questions that you might have? I know I went over it pretty quickly. Yeah, you uh, at, at the front of the, the mask. If do you have one thing that you could tell like potential clients? Like, what's the one thing that you like would really love to let people know how to like be a better client, how to uh, bring 
all the right stuff to um, a, a, someone that they're potentially hiring to make a 3D model, uh, what would you ask that they bring to that sort of, uh, uh, what kind of references, what kind of things to make it as good of an experience for you as a rigorous possible? Really good question. Uh, yeah, basically, if you if you have a live 2D model, that would be an absolutely perfect reference already because that has all the details and all the things that I want to you know as a as a 3D modeler uh, to get right. But if you don't have a a, a live 2D model, just a, a reference, uh, either you know rough or or not rough of the front of the character is, is already more than enough to start it, to start it. But more details it has, the more details I'll be able to put in the model itself. Right? So if you want the character to have a very specifically you know, placed mold, I, I need you to write that down specifically uh, in, in, in the reference itself or else I won't I won't do it. And if it's like a rough reference uh, I will put more of my style into it to, to clean it up a little, uh, rather than copying it exactly. Since since you know sometimes you can tell it's like, but for a perfect reference, what I would ask for would be a front a front view as as detailed as you can make it. You know exactly how you want it. Uh, a side view would be really nice, but not necessary, but very nice. And a back view, especially if the character has like very specific hair in the back, you know, maybe it has long hair, or you know, maybe it has like a backpack or something going on in the back that I can't usually see. That really helps to get it correct. So basically, the, the answer is as many details as you can put in a reference, kind of like how Rose Doodle did in that reference, the better. She didn't have a, a back view, but it wasn't a problem because there was nothing specific about the back that I had to do. So yeah, I think that if not, let me know. It does. Uh, just one other question then, because if you have a live 2D model, that's usually the PSD file, right? Um, so if you have the yes. back of the model in just like a PNG versus a PSD, is that sufficient, or like what works best for that? Yeah. So if you can give me the PSD, I've had that happen. Uh, that allows me to see kind of behind the, the character's hair. And sometimes that helps a lot in knowing what strands go where. If there's strands that I'm not seeing and, and they're very specific, you know, very specifically done by the, the, the by the artist they, they, that they made, I can do that exactly the same. So if I have the PSD, that will make it much easier for me to do it exactly as close as possible to the live to me. But it's not necessary. Like I can usually tell a lot from the model itself just by seeing a PNG. Uh, so if you're not comfortable with giving the PSD to someone because you're not, you know, you're not sure what they're going to do with it, since it costs a lot of money, uh, then you can just give them the PNG, and if they, you know, and you can tell them, hey, uh, if you need, if you need to be, if you need to see behind the character because maybe again they have long hair, I love it, and and. You want to see how it looks like from the front, not necessarily from the back, uh, because you're really waiting or something. Uh, you can just say, if you need to see any parts of the model, I can show you, uh, and just let me know. Basically, and you don't need to specifically give them the PSD, but if you do trust them, just give them the PSD. It only helps. It really does only help, and you can see all the details so much better because you know the resolution is like the maximum it can possibly be. So, yeah. Uh, there is there is someone in, in in the comments asking what is the fix what is the fix for the side profile mount is there a term for that too I don't believe so but uh, all the things that I've learned I've learned through watching and, and you know studying Arc System Works characters so Arc System Works is a game developer who who are Boys, really well known for uh, you know making two D characters into three D almost seamlessly and they look super amazing. And they have a lot of presentations themselves, you know, a, little, uh, a lot of, kind of like Huawei did there, but much, much more informative than what I just did. Uh, explaining a lot of the, uh, the little tricks that I've explained here. And one of them is the little mouth thing, where, where they explain that it needs to go in 
you know, the, the both sides need to go in a little bit so so it uh, so it looks it works better. They also explain how to make eyes better, you know, how to curve them as opposed to have them flat. Stuff like that, you know, just small little things. I really, really highly suggest uh, reading up on, on art system works little presentations that you read on. It's five minutes of, of reading time, but, but it, it can lead to so much uh, like things that you wouldn't even think about doing with, with, with models that really make it amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh god, two questions on my mind. <laughs> so many questions. No. Uh, let, let's go with the man in the back since uh, you, you asked the question before. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. So, um, this is a bit of a legal question, so you know, feel free to you know, um, 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 share um, what you're comfortable sharing. Um, so I'm wondering that if someone were to commission someone else to to um, do the design, do the model, and do the um, um, the rhythm, the whole thing, um, do they still maintain all the rights to that model? So it's so. By that, I mean, um, can they make like any merchandise from that model? Um, can they make um, 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 any kind of content, or do they still need the, the, um, the um, artists to to um, sign off on these things? Yeah. So I believe what you're asking is, do like if a model that I make gets uh, you know edited by somebody else, do they still have all the rights to put that in merchandise and stuff? Is that correct? Um, it's more like um, um, would I have um, 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 any rights um, um, to the original model? So so you know um, um, no editing. Does that make sense? Or should I explain it better? Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I follow. So you mean, uh, like, if if I make if I make a 3D model based on a life 2D, do they still have the rights? To me? It's like okay. So um um um. So sorry. Right, right. So let me try to like um 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 try to simple um. Um, 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 so um, hypothetically, like um, if I hire you to um, 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 create a three model, um, can I sell um, any merchandise based on that model? That's the question. Ah, gotcha. Yes. Uh, in my opinion, uh, yes, you can. Sell any merchandise you want. The design is yours. If I design it, uh, I've never had that happen before. I've never designed a character for anyone apart from myself. Uh, I don't know what I would do then, but since it's never happened, I haven't thought about it. But if uh, I were to make a 3D model, then yes, you you are more than welcome to sell merchandise and stuff. The character design is yours. I just made a 3D model. It's like me selling you a table, uh, but you designing the table. Like you, you can you know take pictures of the table as much as you want. Like you know, you can use it as much as you want. Uh, anyways, uh, the girl from the front had a question, I believe. Oh, um, I was just gonna ask to expand yeah. on the ARP systems uh, thing that you recommended. Um, did you have any specific uh, sources for where to read up on that? Is it like through their website? Things written about them? Do they have like a specific? YouTube channel or something where they put out this information, where's the best way to find that information? Great question. Uh, so it's basically all over the internet, really. Okay. <laughs> but the best place that I would start with is there's a YouTube video, I believe, in GDC. It's GDC 2017, where they explain their very first time uh, make, make it, yes, I can. Mary said that I can link them here after. Yes, I can. Uh, I can link everything to do with our system work. So don't worry, you don't need to go and look for them. Um, please answer this next. Okay, I will, I will answer. I'm, I'm going to try to answer this really quickly. So yeah, basically, there's a GDC video, and there's 
in the in the internet, just all over the place, their presentations specifically uh, in, in in a specific place. I will link to you later, so if you want to check them out, I will put them there. There's more that other people wrote, not specifically them, because a lot of people have studied them, that I can put, but I will put them here. Uh, the next question that Mary wants me to respond is, are there innovations in 2D between that excite you, or that you think aren't really present in the space yet that you'd like to try, like access and work styles, watch and stretch and stuff? So yes, there are a lot of innovations that I would like to do, but uh, it's not really possible right now, because 3D models they don't have their own limitations. I was touching upon the limitations of, of 2D. But 3D models, of course, also have a lot of uh, limitations, which are uh, basically the rigs are very rigid. I can't really, really like bounce much. My hair can have physics, but I can't really bounce much. There's no squash and stretch. Um, things collide. The colliders are really not that good. Things like skirts don't have really good, uh, like, things like skirts don't have really good physics because the, the, the file type doesn't allow for very good physics. So just a lot of stuff that, that could be better and could be expanded upon if uh, file types uh, get expanded upon and, and, and just, just uh, the technology gets closer to, to what we can see in life to be models as well, like, you know, uh, they can both benefit from, from each other, really. You know, the squash and stretch from life to be, and the, I don't know, the, the movement of the face in, from 3D models, which is sometimes better uh, because of the AR kit than it is with life to be. You know, they can, get, they can get better between each other. They're not exclusive, basically. Um, yeah, that file type is VRM, so I asked K Cherry. I believe that's how your name is right. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. Uh, Yes, it's VRM. It's pretty limited. I, I kind of like this. I mean, I'm not hated, but I just like how limited it is. But it's the best we got right now, and I, I really hope they they expand upon it. So yeah, I think we need to end it here. Uh, I'm sorry if it was a little bit of a mess, uh, but I hope you guys uh, learned a thing or two on what goes on behind the scenes with with the models. There's just a lot that goes on that is hard to explain, even if it within an hour. Uh, and yeah, if you have any other questions, I can I can answer them in this Discord. Uh, just uh, just at me if, if if I don't see them as well. Uh, don't don't. And, and basically, or maybe not. No, we have a little in the Discord. We have a little afterthoughts the panel thing. So, so yeah, if you have any questions, you can still ask me. And I hope you guys learned something. Sorry if my ramblings were were a bit. Incoherent at points, but yeah. Okay. Enjoy off guys. Yay! <laughs>